Hi, I'm Will Ruddick. I wanted to talk about issuing and backing a community currency. Um, and so in Kenya right now, we've got um, about 12,000 registered users. We've got, um, you know, maybe about 3,000 people who are trading in a month right now as of last March. It's a bit more now in April. Um, and we've got a lot of trade going on amongst communities uh, in these things, but there's a lot of misconceptions on you know, what and how, uh, what is the currency and how is it being issued. Um, and so I want to get into a few of those um, ideas here. So um, initially you've got a, a group. Um, so we're doing this as a, a nonprofit, but the whole idea is that uh, a community group, um, a cooperative, um, even a bakery, for instance, um, anyone that has some spare capacity to back a credit uh, ought to be able to issue a credit. Um, and so the community inclusion currency is, especially, is essentially a organization coming out and saying, look, um, we have uh, some assets that can back these things. Um, it can be a promissory note against our future capacity. Um, so for instance, um, in our case in Kenya, we are issuing a currency into communities as an airdrop, as a donation, um, and we're backing it with donor funds. Um, and so I'll, I'll get into how that works. But essentially, um, there's a, an amount of credit that's made available. And so this is sort of the, the issuer is going to be along the top here, and the community is kind of going to be in this circle at the bottom. So the community is somehow getting these. Ideally, they're being spent into a circulation. Um, and then the community is able to um, buy back goods and services. So basically the, the issuer, that's, that's us as grassroots economics, but it could be a community, um, a small community in a village, is backing it with inputs and labor as well as available cash, right? And so in some sense, we are backing it as a, a, uh, an organization, a nonprofit that is helping to develop these local markets. So we have phone support. So we're offering a lot of services in terms of marketing within the community. Um, we also get aid funds in and we do a, a staged kind of buyback right now. So these uh, uh, key vendors or chamas or uh, savings groups within communities can basically t exchange some of their currency for this available donor cash that we have. Um, and so what that does is it basically says that, okay, the community is being issued a bunch of cash, a bunch of credit. It's circulating as much as possible in that community. And we try to promote that circulation as much as we can. Um, and there's this staged buyback, right? There's, so as we have available inputs and labor, um, we're able to take some of those vouchers for that inputs and labor. And as we have donor funds available, we're able to take some of that uh, community currency and replace it with uh, some of that cash, right? And then we can continue that cycle, that those currencies that we get in these ways, we can issue back into the community. And this is a nice cycle for us. So we can use donor funds to help support the inputs and labor in terms of marketing as an organization. Um, in terms of spreading the, uh, the systems and teaching people how to use them. Um, we can do things like uh, uh, directories and things like this. And then with available cash, we can help the communities to be able to cash out. Um, so I, I think it's really important to say that you could do this with just inputs and labor. And so that would be like if we are, let's say we represent a cooperative and our inputs and labor are farming work and maize milling, well, people could bring back their currency to us for maize milling once a month or so, and it could come back to us and we could spend it back on labor um, within the community to do collective farming. And so that is an example of some community currencies working in, uh, in some of the rural areas uh, that we work with. Um, this idea that there's a, if there is available cash, <clears throat> well, can that cash also act as a backing? Because it could be that people really, really need petrol, for instance, and there's no way to get petrol or gasoline uh, for the local currency. And so the idea of having some sort of available cash backing, in this case, it's just us buying the vouchers off the community um, as, a, as a relief. Um, so there's a lot of national currency in the community. I mean, not a lot, but it's going into the community. Um, and there's another option here is if we have available cash, instead of just purely buying off these vouchers in the community, 
what if we put it into a reserve fund? And, and presumably the, the community themselves could also decide to, to start feeling a reserve fund. And so this is, this is kind of the idea where <clears throat> You know, you've got your inputs and labor for your farm, you've got your available, let's say it's the water that's available right now, and let's say that it's a, a pretty good rainy season right now and we need to store some water. And so the idea is to put that into a reserve. Now, as national currency in this case is being added to this reserve, um, which we'll show here, um, the idea is that we say, okay, let's peg the let's let's establish a secondary market so the initial market is this inputs and labor and available cash and the circulation here the secondary market now is basically to say that your credit your cic also has some reserve behind it in national currency and that's going to be a guaranteed liquidity we're always going to be if you're holding some of these cic vouchers you can cash them out from that reserve fund and as you do so um, so like here, you know, it says credit destroyed and reserves withdrawn and the share value decreases. So as I'm going to pull out some of those funds, um, I'm going to reduce my share price of the CICs. And as I add more national currency into these funds, um, I'm going to increase the share value to that reserve. So the idea is to say, well, with my inputs and labor, I have this staged buyback. It's, it can be slow, it can be once every month, but with these reserve funds, it could be a continuous source of liquidity, right? So the idea is to take your community currency, take your essential mutual credit that's being backed by inputs and labor and circulation and say, okay, can we add a, a reserve fund behind this? And it could be that initially your reserve fund is nearly empty. There's, there could be almost nothing in there. And as people begin to put money into that reserve fund, they mint, they get to create more of the CICs. And so this, this really changes the concept of saying, okay, um, initially the community says, okay, we've got X amount of inputs and labor, so we're gonna create a bunch of CICs, some community currency, we're gonna inject it into the community and we're gonna accept it back in this loop. That's great. But what if we wanna give people the ability to also mint, to create CICs themselves, right? And so can people essentially buy in? Can they stake some reserve, reserve in order to increase the share value out to that reserve, right? There's that, that, that doesn't have to have anything to do with the inputs and labor. Um, and to be clear, in the communities, we are almost always uh, assigning the value of the community currency to one to one with the national currency. Because generally, like prices are being uh, cut in half, for instance, like where uh, you're buying 100 shillings of flour and you'll spend 50 CICs and the other 50 in Kenyan shillings and things like that. So there's a lot of pegging to national currency. Now, what you can get out in terms of cash, that's a very uh, you know discreet and you know a staged buyback. So it doesn't happen you know every day. We're doing it like every month, and that value is is sort of a different value, right? So you can always get one to one value with your local local goods and services, like paying your school fees, riding on a motorcycle to travel somewhere, um, you know, uh, buying soap and water, right? And then as those people want to cash it out, well, they're going to have to wait for a while if it's, if, it's, if it's in this stage buyback, or if there's reserve funds behind it, they could decide to cash those out on the fly. And that value they're going to get to the reserve funds is going to go up and down depending on how much reserve is still in there. So <clears throat> this enables us to do kind of two things. It, it enables us to sort of save for a rainy day and say, okay, let's put some reserve funds because maybe the inputs and labor aren't always going to be available, right? We don't want the economy to stop just because those inputs and labor stop, right? So we want to have some sort of buffer system. This is sort of like your big water tank, right? So you're, you've got some available rain, let's put it into the reserve fund, and it gives everyone the ability to stake, to add some uh, reserve and mint, create some of these tokens, which they're basically holding as shares. Um, that's based on the, the, the reserve. But it's also, you know, the, 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 the primary market, the inputs and labor are super important here because as the price goes down, let's say people are, are pulling out from this reserve fund a lot and the, the price to buy back in becomes very cheap. So like, let's say for uh, one shilling, I can get two of these vouchers and I'm still getting equal value one-to-one -one with national currency for inputs and labor. So there's an advantage for me to want to buy in, want to basically stake 
um, some fun. So there's an advantage basically to, to pool assets together. So if I'm in this community or I'm a, uh, I'm a sort of impact investor into my local economy, well, I can put some money into a reserve. I create a local credit, right? That credit I could just hold or I, I could spend it on local inputs and labor um, and keep my economy going in the meantime. And so that's, uh, that's sort of the nutshell version of this. So everything along the top here is what you as a currency issuer are sort of, uh, you know, being encouraged to think about here is that your available credit, like the amount of you know, CICs or community currency that you're issuing here, well, I mean, it could be infinite, right? You could have, uh, you know, 20 trillion tokens, right? But the question is, well, how much of that can you actually spend into existence in that community? And that really depends on how much they can use, right? So you can try to get the community to all use it together and whatnot, but if there's no sort of backer of last resort, there's no sort of inputs or labor that you're offering, um, then you have essentially a, a totally unbacked currency. And now the idea is to say, well, look, um, what if, um, let's say we don't have a lot of inputs and labor, we don't have a lot of available cash, um, but us as a community are coming together to create this. And so we all decide to stake some reserve into, um, you know this this reserve together and mint a bunch of CICs and so you know we're going from this idea of saying well an individual or a local group could create their currency and how can the community come together behind it and support it um, and how could they all do that together and so the idea of these reserve funds and and the reason we do this on blockchain is because on the blockchain we can always know what's behind the currency we can always see what those reserve funds are so if there are some reserve funds in there, that enables us to create this automated market maker. And uh, we're using this open source bank or protocol for that to create this system right now that just allows people to always know what's behind one of these systems. And that means that any other person creating another CIC that they've named something else in some other place, as long as they have a connection to those reserve funds, and right now we're using DAI as a reserve, which is basically a stable US dollar. So anyone who has essentially US dollars can establish a value against this local community currency here, right? So that means that many, many local currencies can get together and start trading with each other. And that's not to say that the, the local inputs and labor side of it aren't important. Really, that's sort of the, the, the fundamental, that's the primary market that gives this CIC value. But in terms of its value out to national currency, um, having a reserve fund that can link all these different community currencies together is really, really powerful. So thanks, hope you have a good day.